Guys, can you hear me all right? I'm gonna set this camera up just a little better for you so that way you can really see what we got going here. Sorry about the mess as far as the camera goes. There we go. I think that's uh, gonna do it for the camera. Um, get rid of this work shirt. Welcome. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, I am Skunk, well, according to the title of the video, I'm not. Uh, but that actually happened a day or two ago. So uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment. Um, how are you guys doing? Hope you're staying warm. Um, it is cold here in Northeast Oklahoma. Um, it's probably, I think it's 20 degrees. Let me get my phone. Can you guys hear me okay over there? Can uh, you leave a comment if you can hear me well? I'm about to tell you how cold it is. 18 degrees. 18 degrees here in Northeast Oklahoma. Um, pretty stinking cold. Some of you may have noticed I trimmed my hair and my beard. I, uh, I was just getting tired of it, messing with it and stuff. I was bored. That's why I was growing it in the first place. Um, but yeah, cleaned up, looking good. Thanks to Hair Lady. Oh, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Um, but yeah, so let's talk about these animals. It has been so cold here this uh, last couple of weeks uh, that, uh, oh, a couple days ago, three, four days ago, we had, uh, we had, I had, I had lost three chickens, uh, two juveniles and one of the roosters. It's not old red and it's not Einstein. Um, it was one of the old black roosters we had, uh, here on the farm and uh man it just must have been the cold i think the cold is what took all three of the the chickens uh the two juveniles and the one rooster pretty sure that's what it was i've got shelters out there for them i got hay out there i got uh bedding out there for them um you know what are you gonna do <coughs> uh, i got a heat lamp out there for the juveniles so even with uh bedding and i blocked off all the sides and a heat lamp I still lost a couple, you know, and that's something that happens on the homestead sometimes when it gets cold like this. Um, you might lose a couple animals. Um, leave some comments down below if you've lost any animals either this year or recently in the winter time like this. Um, so yeah, it stinks that we lost a couple chickens, but that's okay. We're gonna, uh, our, our, our flock is still growing. And uh, if you guys watched the video um, a while back with the video I said plans for 2022, um, I had talked about, I got a rare chicken. Um, a few of you actually guessed it. Leave some comments down below if you know what the new rare chicken is that we got here on the farm. Let me tell you a little something here. These chickens are gonna be awesome. I think they're the future of the homestead if we can get them to hatch and breed. Um, look up, when you're done with this video, um, look up, I don't even know how to say it. Let me look right here. Somebody leave a comment down below. This is the kind of chickens we're getting right here. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this kind of chicken, uh, but let me tell you right now, from what the research I've done, these chickens are pretty rare. Um, they only, I can't pronounce it or I'd try to pronounce it for you, but they're the chickens that are all black. I'm talking head to toe, the comb, um, their bodies, everything's black, including their meat. Now, if you've never heard of a dark black meat chicken, look them up. This is what it is right there. The A.M. Kamayan. I can't say it, but um, so they're pretty rare. And some of the things about them that are pretty rare is they only produce maybe about 80 eggs a year versus there's plenty of breeds out there that could produce, you know, 350 eggs a year. Um, someone says a lot of people have those chickens. Uh, a lot of people may have these chickens. I'm not sure. Um, but the people I got these eggs from, uh, they, uh, I'm just telling you right now, the, the purebred ones like this, leave a comment down below if you know how much a, a adult breeding pair of these go for. Um, I'll leave, leave a comment down below. How much do you think a male and a female breeding pair of these chickens go for? Leave some comments down below. I think you're gonna be absolutely shocked. 
I think you're going to be absolutely shocked. And this is just from what I found on the internet. Uh, I'm sure you might have to go to special places to, to get this price and stuff. Uh, someone said they're pronounced uh, Simone Kamani. Um, but anyway, I'll just tell you right now. Uh, I've read on the internet that a breeding pair of these, a male and a female, nope, Nancy, not even close. Um, I heard that a, a male and female breeding pair of these right here, $5,000. I'm not even kidding. Um, $5,000. That's what I'm reading on the internet. Now, maybe the market's not what it was when they posted that on the internet. Um, I don't know. But here's some of the reasons why they're so expensive. Yes, $5,000. About $2,500 for a female, $2,500 for a male. Guys, I don't think everybody has these chickens. I really don't. Um, they're they're kind of rare, you know, and they're expensive to get. I only got these because a friend of mine, her friends raised these. I'm going to find out the name of their hatchery and stuff so I can uh, send you guys to them, leave them a link or something. Um, but they... Uh, that's all they do for a living is raise these chickens. And I guess they're doing pretty good, you know? And, uh, <coughs> um, yeah, everybody's freaking out reading the comments. Um, a, an adult breeding pair of these chickens is supposed to go for about $5,000. Um, and I read somewhere else that a dozen eggs, just a dozen eggs could be up to $150 um, for a dozen eggs. And that doesn't... Uh, <coughs> Someone says that's not accurate, may have been 10 years ago. I really don't know, to be honest, what the market's like these days. Um, but that's just what I was reading. That's what I was reading on the internet. You know, I looked these, this, this breed up and uh, that's what they were talking about, up to five grand for a breeding pair. So we're gonna raise them up. I've got uh, about 18 eggs, I think. Yeah, someone says Chad's got them from Adler's Farm. That's awesome. Um, I got about 18 of them and uh, they're in the incubator right now. And uh, so we're gonna find out, we're gonna see if uh, we can if we can get some of these things uh, hatched out and growed up. Um, because if they, uh, if they are as valuable as what they're saying on, uh, online, um, then I'm gonna keep, uh, keep hatching them out and raising them, selling them and whatnot. Um, th what fascinated me the most is that they have, they say that the, the skin, or the skin, the, the actual meat is black. If you guys have never heard of this stuff, go look up on Google or YouTube, black meat chicken. And it should come up something like uh, that right there. Uh, if, you, if you looked up the black meat chicken. Um, so, hey, what's going on, Victor? How's it going, bud? Um, so anyway, that's, that's what I'm excited about. Um, man, it'd be so cool if they really are worth quite a bit of money. And we can raise them up and uh, do some wheeling and dealing and selling with them or whatever. Um, I heard that the meat's really good. Um, I heard it's pretty much just like regular chicken, but it's a little more tender. So we're going to find out uh, what's the word on that. Um, but that's the big news about the chickens. That's the mystery I've been leaving y'all hanging. Uh, and I'm so sorry, guys. I've been uh, been so caught up in the last couple weeks with stuff. Um, haven't had a chance to edit and post. And uh, just been really enjoying my time with Aiden. So... Um, we're all good here at the, on the farm, but, uh, I just been working and after, uh, enjoying our Christmas break and the, the holidays and stuff and getting back to work, I'm just now kind of getting back into a good routine. So hopefully in the next couple days, uh, we'll be able to get some editing done and drop some regular, regular videos. Um, you know, I don't know, it, it wasn't Red or Einstein that died from the cold. It was just one of the other ones. So don't worry. <laughs> Um, but anyway, I'm excited about raising up these uh, these birds and seeing if we can't make some uh, make some money. Rob says, when you get new pigs, Rob, let me tell you right now, I'm getting some new pigs in the springtime and I cannot wait. And I'll tell you why. I uh, I recently took my uh, two pigs to freezer camp and got them back from uh, I got them back from uh, the butcher, and it is the best, hands down, best sausage, best bacon, best pork chops. I'm not even kidding, and I, I, I'm not just saying that because I raised these pigs. It's the best sausage I ever had in my life. So I'm, I'm so excited to eat all this sausage I have, raise more pigs, and refill the freezer. Um, so that's super exciting. Uh, <coughs> anyway, and uh, also, so 
Uh, what else is exciting about what we got going on is uh, we have uh, we're getting a steer um, pretty soon, and uh, I think this month at the end of the month um, we should be getting a new camera, so I can bring you guys some uh, nicer video quality. Um, we're gonna get a camera hopefully, and we're also going to be getting fencing. Uh, my plan is is to fence off the entire property, and uh, as much as I can anyway, because we're getting a steer. My uh, aunt and uncle have a dairy farm in Northeast Oklahoma, and uh, I traded one of my pigs. I raised two pigs. I traded one of those pigs for some beef, and my aunt and uncle were like, hey, we got beef right here in the freezer. You can take it home, or we have uh, two bottle calves uh, right now, and uh, if you're interested in one of them, you can have one of the calves. And so I decided I want to I raise a calf or raise a steer and uh, I think that'd be fun. Good experience. I mean, that's the whole point of having a homestead, raising your own meat and stuff. And uh, so I'm really excited. I'm trying to, I know I probably don't look like I'm really excited, but I'm really, really excited about getting a steer out here. Um, putting up a fence is probably gonna be a lot of fun considering it's gonna be probably cold, um, but I don't care. I'll go out there and build me a, a fence in the snow. I don't care. I, I wanna get me this calf. And uh, luckily, I think three fourths, at least two sides of my, my whole fence is already bob wire because there's cows being ran on the other side of the, my yard. So there is bob wire fence taking up about three fourths of my yard, so that's good. My plan is, is to buy a, uh, buy a bunch of uh, cattle panels and place those up against the bob wire. Um, and I think that'll be uh, sufficient to keep the cow in, but not only that, if I get some good fencing, maybe not the traditional cattle panels, but the cattle panels that have the smaller squares in them, um, I could even throw a goat in there or something. Yep, see somebody right here says, yeah, Google said $5,000 for a breeding pair, 160 bucks for a dozen hatching eggs, $50 per chick, holy chicken. <laughs> yeah, so tell me that's not exciting. We might have us some expensive, expensive, expensive chickens uh, being raised right here on the farm. So excited about that. Um, guys, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, I wanted to hop on here, catch up with you, let you know I'm still alive, still doing well. Um, we still got plans coming up to do some exciting things. Um, hey, thank you so much, uh, Sharon. I thank you. She gave us 10 bucks. She said, enjoy your videos. Hope you have a great 2022. Thank you. Um, so I'm excited, you know, we got big things coming, big things coming. Thomas, I did not uh, read your comment. What's your comment, bud? I haven't been uh, able to keep up too much. If you want me to read your comment, sometimes it's easier if you write it in all caps. Um, it's just easier to read um, on these screens. So uh, leave another comment, Thomas. Um, also, uh, yeah, I'm super excited. Uh, we got the gardens doing well. I'll be showing you guys uh, the garden here pretty soon. If you notice, I'm in my kitchen and usually in my kitchen is where the garden is. Well, I was able to take down the 8x8 uh, grow tent from Mars Hydro and put it in another room. So I'm super excited about that. I got my kitchen back. You know, we love cooking and stuff. And um, just at the time when I first got it, I had so much stuff in this other bedroom that uh, it just wasn't. Hey, thank you very much. He said, uh, Happy New Year's. Best wishes to you and good health. Thank you, Thomas. Um, I, I didn't have the room in the other rooms to put this thing up. So... Uh, but I did. Me and Aiden uh, took one of the weekends and we cleared out this bedroom, this back bedroom, and we stuck that uh, 8x8 grow tent from Mars Hydro in there. And uh, it's awesome. I can't wait to show you guys that. It's looking really good. Uh, what? Taylor family says, still looking for love? Question mark. I don't know how we got on that. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, we, uh, the garden, Mars Hydro garden, um, I'm going to leave some links down below for you guys if you're interested in starting your own indoor garden, if you want to look at some of the tents and stuff. Mars Hydro's got all kinds of cool stuff on their website. Go check them out. Um, they got different size tents for different size areas, anywhere from like 2x2, two 2x4 two, two uh, size tents, all the way up to like I, I got the 8x8. Eight eight. That's really big, so that's really cool. Um, also, uh, what else? Uh, all the lights they sent us a bunch of really cool lights i cannot wait to show you guys the new lights that came in um we got some new lights in and uh it's awesome i cannot wait to show you guys we got enough lights in there we got three big lights in there from mars hydro we got a 
FC 4800 and a FC and two FC, uh, I think uh, 6800s or six, 600s. I don't know. Um, bottom line is, is that they're really big and they're gonna cover a large area like we want them to. One light's rated for a four by four area. The other two lights are rated for four by four to five by five areas. Um, so we should have plenty of lighting now for our indoor grow tent. And uh, I can't wait to get in there and show you on the next video because we're live right now. But on the next video, I'll uh, take some really good shots of uh, the, the garden. Um, the watermelon is taking off. Watermelon Rick, guys, is blooming. The watermelon's starting to vine out and stuff. The tomato plants aren't really growing that well. I think I might be underwatering them. Um, and that could be the case. Some of this is uh, being underwatered, I think. And, you know, it's just it's a learning experience for me. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. I'll do my very best on this garden. And uh, what doesn't work, I'll know for the next one. And uh, But right now, I think uh, everything's looking pretty good. Maybe I might be underwatering a little bit. But I suppose underwatering can be just as bad as overwatering, you know. Um, so we're going to get to the bottom of that. I'll, I'll be sure to fill all that stuff out. And... Uh, yeah, you know, everything's going good here on the homestead. Um, keep an eye out in the next couple days, hopefully. Uh, uh, oh, dang, look who just popped online. Life with Laura Lynn. That's my hair lady. Um, she cleaned me up. You know, she just freehanded this. She was really mad at me, by the way. I, I was wanting to uh, cut all this off. My hair was so long, I was able to slick it all back, and it stayed back. And this beard was probably about to here, maybe. I don't know. Uh, someone said tomatoes don't like to get their feet wet. Be careful. Um, all right. I'll watch out for getting the tomato feet wet. Um, but anyway, leave some comments down below. Have you ever had an indoor garden before? Um, what are some problems you had with your indoor garden if you've ever had one? Um, leave some comments about um, your animals. Have you ever lost any animals here in the wintertime? Leave some comments about... Um, what do you want to see Aiden cook next? Aiden's got to do us a cooking video here soon. Um, we still owe the Moorhead Homestead a uh, cheesecake. But every time I've been to the uh, stinking uh, Walmart, um, they're out of cream cheese. Everybody's done bought up all the cream cheese. So it's kind of hard to make a cheesecake without the cream cheese. Um, so, hey, Bo and Lindy, I'm going to get that cheesecake to you as soon as, uh, as soon as the store stock back up. So... And guys, if you're not staying warm, I hope you uh, are getting prepared for colder weather. I think colder weather is coming. And, uh, you know, so be careful for that. I'm doing that for the animals. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be uh, adding more straw, hay, heat lamps, wind blockers, you name it. Um, trying to really take care of the animals. I do not want them to be uh, um, too cold, you know, as much as I can. <laughs> Life's a little limp. So here's a funny story today. I'm at work and I get a uh, I get a video from my hair lady. My hair lady sends me a video and it's of a chicken on the highway. There's this chicken on the highway hanging out underneath an overpass and the hair lady sends me this video and says, hey, there's a chicken out here on the highway. You ought to come get it, make a video on it or whatever. You know, she goes, it'd be good content. And uh, it's so funny. I just so happened to be out and about for work. I was delivering medication to a client. And uh, she's like, yeah, it's over here underneath this overpass. And uh, I was like, I didn't say nothing to her. I was about 10 minutes away from that overpass. So uh, I just kept driving until I got to that overpass. I got out, sure enough, there's a chicken over there. And uh, I had my coworker who was with me turn the camera on. I went over and I caught this, I caught this chicken on the highway. <laughs> and uh, took a little video of me holding this chicken and then I immediately set it down because uh, it stunk really bad. And all of a sudden I was plagued with thoughts of like, man, what if this chicken's out here full of disease or something? I don't know. I don't know. It freaked me out. I set the chicken down and I left. So I didn't rescue that chicken. It stunk really bad. I rushed to a gas station and I scrubbed my hands and my arms. Um, <laughs> so that, that was my little uh, afternoon adventure with the uh, highway chicken. <laughs> Uh, hopefully somebody will find it or it'll find its way back to where it's going. And uh, thank you guys. A lot of you guys leaving me good comments about the hair and the beard. Y'all liking it. Uh, I think it feels a lot better and looks a lot better than it did. Um, but it was fun to grow it out also. So, And now this part, thankfully she didn't just shave all this off real, real 
short, uh, it's nice and thick still kind of, and I like that. So uh, Laura Lynn, everybody leave a comment down below. Tell Laura Lynn, go get that chicken and take it home, Laura. Uh, everybody wants to see you get that chicken. Someone says they checked out that thing, uh, those chickens, and they are correct. 5,000 bucks for a breed pair of these chickens. Guys, I'm so excited right now. If uh, if these things are really worth 5,000 bucks, you're about to see a new chicken farmer, okay? I'm gonna get rid of all my other chickens almost. I'll probably keep a, a good amount of the young ones for eggs, but man, I'm telling you right now, if I can successfully raise and breed these chickens, I'm about to get rid of everything else that I got pretty much and uh, focus on them. Um, because shoot, if, uh, if uh, this other family, they've been raising them and hatching them and selling them and whatever, um, I guess that's what they do full time. They've, they've uh, successfully bred them to the point where um, they're able to, they were able to quit their full time jobs and raise these chickens. Um, so look out, <laughs> I'm about to put my uh, two weeks notice in <laughs> over at my work if I can uh, get this, uh, this chicken stuff off the ground. <laughs> Everybody says check with Chad at Adler Farms. You know, I shot Chad a message recently on uh, Facebook. I think he probably gets a million messages probably a day. Um, he never got a chance to read it. Um, and I don't have Chad's phone number. I need to call my brother maybe and get Chad's phone number. Um, but I guarantee you his uh, Facebook messenger is probably absolutely full. He probably never checks that thing. I, I know uh, there's been times where my brother told everybody how to find me on Facebook and I, for about two weeks, I had about 500 messages in my Facebook Messenger. <laughs> uh, hey, Claude, how's it going, brother? Uh, Mr. Gibbs is doing good. I'll be uh, showcasing Mr. Gibbs and I suppose Mrs. Gibbs in our next video. Make sure you guys know how they're all doing. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Gibbs is our turkeys. Um, we got the, the female from the Walker Farm family. We got the, the Tom from over at... Uh, uh, this Taylor family guy says, I promise I'm not a weirdo. I was just really actually curious. Uh, I'm not calling you a weirdo. You just threw me off with your comment about asking if I'm ready for love. It sounds like something somebody says to somebody in prison. <laughs> you ready for love, boy? No. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, I'm probably about to get off here. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. Just hang out. Maybe start uh, working on uh, editing a video. And... Uh, try to stay warm it's nice and cold here in northeast oklahoma so i'm really fighting to stay warm uh, i got plenty of heat and stuff so don't worry about that i'm fine oh that's cool thank you guys so much for your uh your comments everybody likes the the prison comment apparently <laughs> um but yeah i hope you guys stay warm keep don't don't give up on me now I'm, i'll be posting a video here before before we know it and uh, that's funny. I did title that, that video called Looking for That Lucky Person. I'll tell you what, Taylor family, I'm always looking for that lucky person. Um, if there's a lucky lady out there somewhere for me, she's bound to turn up. So um, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking. I'm more of a waiting. I'm the kind of guy that's like, hey, uh, maybe I'm waiting on a, you know, a nice young lady to sweep me off my feet now. That's probably why I've been single so long is because I've been waiting for someone to sweep me off my feet. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here and stop talking about uh, me looking for love. Um, the only love I need is uh, those chickens to hatch so I can love on that money that they're going to make me 5000 bucks for a breeding pair. So uh, that's all I'm looking for is looking forward to is uh, see if we can hatch how many of these we're going to get to hatch out. Hopefully they all grow up. And then hopefully next month, uh, I think we are going to be getting this steer the first week of February, I believe. Um, I should get a good check uh, towards the end of January that should be able to cover the fencing. Um, so hopefully I can get that fencing up and uh, make a nice secure uh, pin for uh, this steer. My aunt and uncle said they're also going to be dropping off a couple round bells and I'll just need to keep up with... Uh, the hay and the uh, feed so man lots going on here i'll tell you what i gotta get though i have to get either just right around the same time uh as i get this steer is i'm gonna have to either borrow a trailer for a little while or buy a trailer and some and some barrels because there is no way that i'm gonna raise a steer 
and, and, and pay for bag feed. Guys, if there's anything I can tell you that I've learned from homesteading so far, buy in bulk. When it comes to feed, buy in bulk. They'll, they'll nickel and dime you to death with the bag feed. Um, I'm telling you, you get about eight times more for the same price when you buy bulk. So I'm gonna try to get me some, uh, some barrels and borrow a trailer if I have to, and uh, we'll get the bulk feed. So one of these days I'll save up enough money and get one of those really cool pull behinds uh, feed uh, deals. You know, you pull it down there, they fill it up, you pull it back and park it, you're good to go. That's the way to go. I can't wait to get to the point where I can get one of those. So, man, it was good catching up, man. I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, look out for the next video. There's going to be a lot of cool stuff on there. A lot of good updates on the farm animals, the garden. And uh, I have a pretty good little surprise for you guys. Um, I don't think you guys are going to believe it when I show you the footage that I caught of something. Um, Kevin just sold the feed trailer. Of course he did. I guess I should probably watch Kevin and uh, Dutch's channel more often and Adler's channel more often and uh, Arms Family Homestead more often and Walker Farm Family more often. But I'll tell you what, guys, between the, uh, between the full-time job, the kid, trying to do my own YouTube thing, <laughs> I ain't got time to watch much YouTube, to be honest with you. <laughs> and usually when I am watching YouTube, it's just to listen to music or something, you know? I, I like watching, listening to music a lot. Uh, so I love you guys. I'm not going to keep you any longer. Um, man, I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. If you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Smash that like button and uh, look out for the next video. Don't forget to treat other people the way you want to be treated. You never know what someone's going through. Um, Saturday night's really exciting. I want to tell you that. Saturday night, I'm going to a local rehab, and I get to speak to a bunch of guys there, um, kind of share my story with them. I went through rehab, went through a, a long-term 15-month program, and I'm like five years sober off of uh, meth. If you believe it or not, this, this guy used to do drugs, pretty bad, hard drugs. But praise God, I was delivered from all that five years sober um, from meth and uh, couldn't be happier. So if you're looking for help, if you're strung out on drugs, you're at the end of your rope, you feel like it's hopeless and there's nowhere to turn, dial 918-864-2719. That's the Reckless Saints of Nowhere. It's a nonprofit that got me into rehab. They can get you into rehab too. Um, call them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Someone leave that number down there in the comments, please. 918-864-2719. And uh, yeah, maybe we can get some people that want some help, some help. Um, it's never too late. I was at the end of my rope and, uh, you know, with some hard work and uh, the grace of God, here I am. So, you know, it's possible. If you really want some help, call the Reckless Saints of Nowhere. And uh, hopefully, if they don't answer something, leave a voicemail. They'll call you back. You know, they're, they're busy people too. I think there's like one person running the phone. Um, so if, if, if you don't hear back from them immediately, that's they're going to get back to you, okay? Leave a voicemail. Leave your phone number. Call again, you know? Blow their phone up until they answer. Um, you know, don't ever expect people to work harder than you at your recovery. Um, that's something that's people have to understand is uh, you can't work harder than the person trying to get sober. You know, they gotta, they gotta want it if you really want it. So anyway, I'm done spouting stuff off. I love you guys. We have a wonderful day. We'll catch you on the next video.